Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and I'm Jack and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about raising baby, what is it? Baby peppermint shrimp. Baby peppermint shrimp. Green water, phytoplankton and uh, brine shrimp. So we've got all the home culture and uh, potential uh, is going to be discussed in today's video as well as how here at Reef Galleria they're creating a whole bunch of it themselves to be able to sell to the public. So if the home culture inside of it isn't really for you, you'll be able to buy it in the shop as well. All right, so tell us what we have here in these lovely green containers, Jack. So in each container, we've got uh, baby brine, phytoplankton, and uh, baby peppermint shrimp at different stages in their life cycle. So these are younger peppermint shrimp. Uh, they're about a week old at this stage. And then these are older peppermint shrimp they're about three weeks old now. So um, we'll run some footage and we can show you the size different in the um, different shrimp. Um, these ones, the young ones were pretty lucky and we caught the peppermint shrimp right at the uh, good timing and managed to get about 200 babies out. Um, so they have actually spawned in one of the sumps of one of the tanks yes, in the shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so we had mysterious peppermint shrimp escaping into a sump and then later they just grown there and, and live there and um, have turned into our uh, brood stock. <laughs> and then the the older batch, we this is how we first discovered the peppermint shrimp were actually in there. Um, we saw some babies in the main seahorse tank, and at this stage we didn't have much seahorses in stock, so they didn't eat all the babies. So we managed to save about eight, and now we're down to five of the older uh, larvae. So um, you'll see in the footage how. They have grown appendages and, and, and transformed, and then the next stage for them is settlement, so they actually uh, change into a, a baby shrimp, um, which I think is now about three weeks away or so. Yeah. So the reason for the green water is to feed the baby brine shrimp that's in there, and then therefore the baby brine shrimp then feed the peppermint shrimp. Uh, the maintenance involved is constantly changing the baby brine shrimp in there because after they reach 24 hours old, the baby brine become too solid for the peppermint shrimp to eat. They form an exoskeleton that's harder and then the, uh, the peppermint shrimp cannot consume them. So basically we're changing the, uh, the, the baby brine in the, in the solution and then the green water is just feeding them and keeping them alive. So it's kind of like uh, filling the brine shrimp up and then the, the peppermint shrimp then eat that. So they're all also taking the energy from the phytoplankton in with them. So we've got a full yeah. ecosystem going on. We've got the, jump, the, yeah. the, the phytoplankton or green water to feed the brine shrimp, the brine shrimp to feed the peppermint shrimp. Correct, yeah. But yeah. Uh, separately, all of these things, uh, or some of them are beneficial to a reef tank. So a lot of reefers will dose both um, baby brine shrimp and rainwater or phytoplankton to reef tanks because they make fantastic coral food. Definitely, yeah. So beyond the requirements for just raising those two things to feed the baby peppermint shrimp, you're also creating a lot more cultures of um, uh, green water and baby brine shrimp to sell in bottles so that people can dose for their reef tanks. Absolutely. So um, baby brine especially, Freshly hatched brine is perfect coral food, mainly because you don't want to feed the coral the brine shrimp, but the egg sac that's attached to the brine shrimp is super, super nutritious. So that's why people who are breeding fish and, and, and all these tiny, tiny little animals are feeding the freshly hatched brine, because then the, instead of the brine shrimp absorbing the nutrition given by the yolk sac, uh, the, uh, the, the fish or the, the other critter that they're trying to raise is taking on the nutrition from it. The awesome. Yeah. So going back to the start of this life cycle, how does one create green water or, or phytoplankton rich water? Okay, so you can start your own culture very easily by uh, purchasing a green water culture or getting a green water culture from a friend. It's just the green water, that's all you need. Um, and air stone or air bubbles just to circulate it and light. So it's daylight, you put it on a window sill, we run a little. Um, I guess, cat cupboard of, of, of light um, for all our cultures. So it's just one floodlight powering all our cultures. Um, but yeah, windowsill works perfectly fine. Even if you've got a refugium in your in your sump, you can just put the culture in your, um, your 
your sump cabinet and, and the refugium light will spill out and feed the culture. So it, you don't necessarily need a whole kit to start this. It's just a matter of an ear stone, a bottle, and some light. Yeah, I've um, seen a lot of people culturing phytoplankton in 2.25 uh, uh, litre Coke bottles uh, with an air stone dropped yeah. in the bottom. Now, are they in salt water? Or yes, it, yeah, yeah, salt water. Yeah, yeah. And, and is that just re regular salt water measured to 1.025 specific gravity? So or? for our salt water here, we actually use the water from our seahorse tank. Yep. Main reason being is the nitrate and phosphate from the seahorse tank is going to feed the plankton being a green with chlorophyll yeah you want to be able to feed so you want actually nutrients actually as well a so more nutrient uh, rich yeah. water so if you've yeah. got high high nitrates in your reef tank that water would be perfect yeah but if you're running a ulm system maybe you might need to add a bit of a nutrient to the water to be able to use it to create phytoplankton yeah you can yeah there's also a range of fertilizers on the market um even just like regular plant fertilizers i think sea sol and osmocote are like couple of the, the homebrew uh, uh, recommendations. So yeah, um, we use sea salt here to fertilize them. But um, yeah, so you can use a fertilizer with fresh seawater or tank water, but we probably, we use a combination between the seals tank water and the, uh, the fertilizer. Right. But um, if you wanted to keep a sterile, I guess, like limit it to, limit to so there's no pods or anything in there, maybe mix your own uh, uh, artificial salt water and then add your, your add the culture fertilizer, yeah, yeah. Like fertilizer yeah. yeah. All right, so now you've got uh, green water being cultured. Mm -hmm. How do you take the next step and start creating uh, baby brine shrimp? Okay. So your brine shrimp eggs come as uh, this packet here. It's just dried little uh, eggs, pellets. Yeah, they're tiny, tiny, tiny uh, little eggs. Um, most of you, if you have done sea monkeys as a child or you have children that are doing sea monkeys, it's the exact same thing. This is just uh, a lot more eggs in the packet. Um, you just pour them in, soak them, 12 to 24 hours later, you've got brine shrimp hatching. Um, and then the product is the, the shrimp in here. So if you want to see if your brine shrimp have hatched or something, put a, put it up to the window or put a light or a torch in the culture and you'll they'll all be attracted to the light. So that's how we can also siphon out the baby peppermint shrimp because they'll also go to the light so uh, especially at night when they um, generally the shrimp will molt they'll release all their eggs uh, and then you just shine a torch to the, the sump or the tank or wherever they are and they'll all be attracted so you can then scoop them out so um, that's a good way of seeing if your brine shrimp have hatched successfully and, and we um, only want to when dosing brine shrimp to a reef tank you only want to dose the brine shrimp themselves not the egg casings that they hatch out yeah so um in a way to, to basically, again, to get rid of the egg casings is the egg casings will sink, the brine shrimp will be attracted to the light. So you've got the brine shrimp up here and the egg casings down here. So you can siphon that out or scoop out the brine shrimp, either or, yeah. yeah. Um, we usually just uh, siphon out the, the egg casings and then we can pour the whole water in. Not from these because we've got the baby peppermint shrimp in there, but um, all the other water, if you get rid of the peppermint shrimp then you can add the whole water so you're feeding brine and, and all the goodness in there. You've added the eggs to your green water and the next day they start hatching. Um, how long would you typically uh, leave the, um, the brine shrimp before feeding them to the tank and how long can you leave them um, and they remain alive in green water? Mm -hmm. So the brine shrimp will basically your last eggs will hatch at about 30 hours max. So between that 30 hours, I would probably say the next 24 hours is kind of your crucial time point if you're using them for uh, a coral food, maybe even 12 hours for coral food, just because you want to be able to feed that egg sac. You don't want them to absorb all the egg sac that they, or the yolk sac that they come with. Yeah. Um, otherwise, if you're feeding uh, a larger fish, then the brine shrimp can live up to six months. So uh, green water will, will suffice them for a, an amount of time, and then they'll probably have to move on to meatier foods or, or more food, um, maybe in the form of coral food or powdered food. Um, but most, most of that time, you'll probably just want to feed them before you get to that point. So just probably stick with the green water. Yeah, they're, they're most nutritious when they're young. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So I hope you found this interesting. But if you're thinking about culturing green water, phytoplankton, bright shrimp or shrimp at home and saying, mm, maybe that's not for me, you will be able to buy bottles of it to feed to your reef tanks directly from 
Greek Galleria. So how is that going to work, Jack? So we currently work on the cultures we've mentioned, also modifiers and code pods, hopefully soon. Um, but basically the way I want to implement it to reduce the level of single-use plastic models is kind of like a buyback scheme or a scheme where you buy in. So you might just buy the bottle once off, you bring it back and we'll refill it for you um, at a discounted rate. Uh, so, so a real trade and go. So just to reduce our, our impact on the environment so we're not throwing away so many bottles. Um, after all, we are a reef shop, we've got to kind of care for the reef. Well, I'm really keen to start dosing some green water and brine shrimp to my tank. And when, I, uh, when it's ready to go, I'll be the first to use it. And I'll definitely be showing you some footage of how the corals react. I have seen it in the past. Corals can have some amazing feeding responses to live food and green water in particular. So, yeah, that'll be really exciting. All right, so thanks for that, Jack. It's been really helpful and really useful. I hope uh, some of you out there might be inspired to look into green water or feeding baby brine shrimp to your tanks. Uh, and in a couple of months, there'll be baby shrimp uh, that won't be so baby anymore available for sale here in store. And there'll be you know, local fish store captive bred shrimp. Definitely. Hopefully, uh, little Aptasia eating monsters. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button down below if you liked the video. Leave a comment if you've ever done anything like this uh, yourself, if you've ever looked into culture and phytoplankton. But my name is Marcus. And I'm Jack. You've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.